Hello, good evening, and welcome back. A lighter story this evening. Um, I've just come back from Lewis Bonfire Show, which was uh, which was great. Um, the, the the great processions and obviously the, the fireworks being the best in the world for the fifth of November. And what intrigued me is that despite being a conservative stronghold, it would seem, although going more to the the Lib Dems in the last election, sure, that they still. The majority of the people there are, of course, white, um, which is very different from, from Manchester. And also, the the amount of different things they dressed up as, including some sort of tribal costumes and painting their faces, I, I thought very intriguing. Um, and then the supposed hate for conservatives despite voting for them but anyway um if you're interested i'm more than happy to go into more details on that but today from paul joseph watson on summit news pewdiepie highlights vile epstein didn't kill himself meme because hey it's it's about time we we all uh, got some jokes so to show the kind of thing that he means they've got one here saying if you want your house to smell like fool boil some orange peels with half a teaspoon of cinnamon on medium heat I do this every fall, and everyone loves it. And Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> so the the meme format is uh, always seems like you're learning an interesting fact, and then suddenly, and my uh, personal favourite is here. The babarusa is a wild pig whose tusks can go so long they curve backwards, ultimately impaling their skulls and accidentally killing them. Unlike Jeffrey Epstein, who was killed on purpose um, to protect the latest paedophiles. <laughs> And Paul Joseph Watson, uh, PGW, goes on to note that it's interesting how, despite there being a bit of a delay, that the official story of Epstein committing suicide has never been accepted, and now it's become very meme-worthy, and there's a format that clearly works, and it's, it's spreading more awareness of that. And this comes on the heels of Twitter saying they don't want to allow any political ads uh, on their platform because it's, it's just too difficult to tell. You know, what's what's correct, what's incorrect, and then what's right and wrong, what's acceptable, unacceptable. So it's easier to just do a full sweep ban and say, no, you can't, you can't do it. Of course, whether or not this will also affect news outlets who wish to be biased in, in their reporting um, and how they wish to bring that into effect will question on how effective they, they wish it to be, of course. Um, I think Jack Dorsey is always one step behind when it comes to these things, so we'll see how effectively it's implemented. Um, I, I think it's it's a very nice idea to try and say with his uh, hippie persona to say we can all get along. But <laughs> given how well these things have been implemented and his own in inherent uh, biases, I suppose, as Tim Poole pointed out, for example, with the, the trans issues, then I, I don't see this being as, as effective as he may wish it to be. But let's, <laughs> let's, let's read on. So... Um, Portrait for Watson mentions some more things here. Remember, memes aren't just funny cat videos. They can literally swing elections, which is probably why big tech hates them. Uh, yes, they definitely uh, help Trump, and it's the ideas that then gets people talking and, and thinking, of course. Uh, the idea being, like the court jester, that you can say the ugly truths to the crown because you're covering them up in, um, in, in humour, which then makes them more palatable and acceptable. So... He says, last month Twitter announced that it will begin a crackdown on synthetic and manipulated media, leading to fears that political memes could be censored in the run-up to the 2020 presidential election. Earlier this year, Instagram announced it would use 52 global fact-checking partners mm -hmm, to censor false photos and memes on its platforms, according to Pointer, uh, from Facebook, of course. Last year, Facebook also announced it was developing a new AI algorithm that can detect and ban offensive memes. Of course, when it comes down to AI supposedly being able to detect these things, I... <laughs> I, I'm just reminded by how many times 4chan has been able to trick AI um, and in 2016 was of course a, a fine example of 4chan just winning everywhere and I think that if they do try to bring in something like AI like this then it'll have the same fate and it will not be effective at all um, or <laughs> better yet the whole uh, like search for truth algorithm and Tom Scott did an hour long video on this on, at the World Institute that even if they go for something and go, oh, well, here are the findings, what makes you think that it's going to be favourable to you? And similarly that Tom Scott mentions, it's that if you do find something that is then true, and this is what the machine says, it's unemotional, it's clearly logical, then 
are you actually going to believe it? Or are you just going to say, oh no, this has been bought out, there are bad reasons, doesn't understand, needs more data, whatever it might be. Is your confirmation bias going to overrule your possibility for, for new information? On, on the flip side, of course, the then how sceptical is, is too sceptical. At what point should you change your mind uh, without then being swayed by someone who's manipulative? It's obviously a very difficult thing to balance. But I think trying to understand the other person um, and just going with goodwill tends to sort these things out for itself. Um, never thinking that somebody's evil and not even necessarily thinking that they're, they're stupid. Um, ignorant, if you will. That you can simply say, well, they, they might be going for a, a different approach. Like I think with Brexit, for example, it, it can be summed up saying that Remainers think that... Um, Brexiteers are isolationist and, and racist and xenophobic. Whereas Brexiteers would say, well, no, we're just, just freedom loving. We, we'd like to be able to be able to decide our own fate, essentially our own destiny. Um, that they're very different ideas, even though they can, of course, be different conclusions from the same results. Saying that, yes, we want to be away from them. It's like, ah, oh, well, well, why? It's like, well, we value our freedom. Uh, but, but is it because you're an evil person? It's like, well, just try to understand each other. Um, the, the funny thing is, of course, with something like Brexit and saying, well, we want independence, it doesn't mean you can't have deals with people and get on with them. It just means that you're not forced to do it. There is no forced coercion. And now it's just a, a willing trade, which is <laughs> always better for all parties involved. But, uh, moving on. <clears throat> he says that the Donald subreddit was subsequently placed in quarantine and 4chan has been repeatedly blamed as a radicalising outpost for mass shooters and right-wing extremists. Yes, they will uh, try to blame it on anybody else because, of course, if you're pushing a narrative and there are dissenters and then people are listening to them and realising that you're wrong um, and therefore acting out against you, then you're going to blame the dissenters and not yourself. It's very difficult to try to look in the mirror and think, what am I doing wrong? What could I do better? Which is extreme ownership, as Choco will uh, pounce as well and I, I abide by that and, and do suggest it and in that case you could go well okay I, I know I've done something wrong and I could change it but is it worth the cost to me in order to get that outcome because if it isn't then obviously prioritise something else and you're not a bad person for doing so but anyway uh, let's just wrap up with a, a few more random ones here so <laughs> we've got a nice uh, pumpkin carving, Epstein didn't kill himself um, we've got a single moment when you realise Epstein didn't kill himself or <laughs> how to eat candy corn open bag, poor candy corn in the trash can Epstein didn't kill himself and last but not least this is the plaque left on the surface of the moon by Apollo 11 here men from the planet earth first set foot upon the moon July 1969 AD we came in peace for all mankind as a reminder that Jeffrey Epstein did not kill himself <laughs> So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to hear more about uh, Lewis Bonfire event and uh, the history therein, then do let me know. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Enjoy your week.